inverse and in the interesting case when gamma and gamma inverse are both non-algebraic integers the rank is 2 with a basis d comma n and that is sort of interesting because that shows that if i take uh, z to the power this set and i mention it i generate it to this i map it to this group by sending d to the n times n to the m S sorry let me take an integer n d and an integer n n and it goes to d to the power n d times n to the power n n and that is as i'm saying an isomorphism which is uh, very uh, easy to prove and it is due to the fact that d and n are co-prime ideals so let me assume here that the rank is 2 so if the rank is 2 which is the most interesting case but what is particularly interesting about this isomorphism is that it is not just an isomorphism of uh, abelian groups but it is even an isomorphism of partially ordered sets here you have a partial order you, you one pair of integers is at most another pair of integers if and only if that is true for each of the coordinates separately and here you have uh, uh, inclusions maybe i should write inclusions here and larger ideals have greater exponents so that is an isomorphism of partially ordered abelian groups and it is also the case that this this group d and n d generated by d and n is closed not just under the group operations but also under gcds the gcd of two ideals in this group is again in this group and the exponents are just gotten in the same way as you get the exponents in the prime factorization of a gcd you just have to take at each of these d and n the minimum of the two exponents and it is also not just closed under GCDs but also closed under LCMs least common multiples which come down to intersections and in this case you should not take the minimum of the exponents but you should take the maximum of the exponents and what you see here is that when you restrict to this admittedly somewhat small class of ideals you have a good substitute for what you are used to from prime factorization however prime factorization is not accessible to us by polynomial time algorithms whereas everything that i've been saying here you can compute in polynomial time and one thing that is also very striking about this is that all we have been doing in order to make this a so a was the blow up of one gamma so by definition of a and i've seen that in a moment the ideal generated by one and gamma is invertible over a that is the only condition that we implied on a and a was going to be the smallest ring for which it is true but now look what we got here this group contains uh, the ideal generated by gamma because that is n divided by d and it is a group so it contains the ideal generated by gamma to the n for every n in 
the integers. And it is closed under plus. So you see that the following is also true for every finite subset, not empty, of the group generated by gamma, that is just a bunch of those gamma to the n, the ideal generated by them, a times s, is a invertible. Because it is a sum of finitely many ideals sitting in the group already. So we forced only one and we got many of them for free. And that is a phenomenon that we will now also see in the rest of the lecture, which is devoted to a similar situation where we are interested not in getting just two co-prime ideals, but a possibly larger finite set, large enough so that we can factor a given finite set of elements into those ideals and also can make sums of those ideals as we need them invertible. So that is going to be the second half of my lecture. Are there any questions? Okay. So let me tell you how that works and that is the co-prime base algorithm for ideals. And that is a little trickier than it is for the ordinary integers. And that is why I will first remind you of how the co-prime base algorithm works for ordinary integers. I will sort of give you a baby version of this algorithm because the precise implementation details and the better data structures are for the present purpose not needed at all. And I will try to present this in such a way that you can somehow see what is going to happen if you want to extend this from ordinary integers to ideals in orders. Okay, so let me first do the old co-prime base algorithm. Old means uh, three days old, it is was from Monday. Old co-prime base algorithm. And what does it do? Given, that is the input, given A1 through AM, and I take them to be positive integers, this algorithm finds a finite set, which I call capital X, and it is a finite set of integers greater than one. We don't want to have the unit ideal, so to speak. A finite set, capital X, of pairwise co-prime integers. such that each AI is a power product of those axes. And when I say a power product, then I exclude negative powers. So each AI is of the form a product of the elements of X with certain 
multiplicities that are non-negative integers and yeah because the c's are pairwise co-prime and greater than one these exponents will also be unique it may remind you of what i just told you about the d and the n and this algorithm operates in the following manner so let's write it down here well i may as well here you start from taking for the x the initial set of integers except that you kick out the number one in case it happens to be in there the property that x is always having in the algorithm is that at least every ai will be a power product of the axis and i also want that all elements of x are positive integers all that is lacking is the coprimality condition so if so we just check it if all a different from b in x are co-prime then you are done you terminate x is the answer and if that is not the case then you do something that i told you already otherwise you pick a and b in x that are not co-prime you compute the gcd with the euclidean algorithm which i call d and you replace a and b in x by three elements namely a over d d and b over d and you omit possible ones that you may have introduced and of course we are really thinking about x as a set here so if you introduce duplicates you should also discard them and it is clear that if you do this you preserve the properties of x that i mentioned each original ai is still a power product because the a is a product of these two and the b of the others they are also integers greater than one and in one respect the situation has gotten worse because x may have gotten a bit larger but there is one way in which well there are two ways actually in which x has gotten better namely there is not there are now two co-prime the, the a and the b have been replaced by co-prime elements and also the numbers are typically getting smaller and it is not difficult to see you can uh, prove that you can read the proof in the notes that this is a polynomial time algorithm but there is one issue that deserves attention and that is uh, what can you say about the output of the algorithm is the output of the algorithm completely determined by the input or does it depend on the choices that you make in the course of the algorithm and that is a slightly tricky issue but you can resolve it by somehow uh, writing down a set of integers that um, you will always that, that with the property that all numbers that you will encounter are among those integers and that is the set c that is the set uh, that is the smallest what i'm writing down now is perfectly elementary but it will become a little bit less easy to immediately understand when you pass to ideals this is the smallest subset of the positive integers which contains one and 
all AI and is closed under two operations, namely multiplication and GCDs. And if you look at this set, then you see all elements of all axes encountered are not just integers greater than one, but they are also in the multiplicative group generated by C, which I write as C to the power Z, since I want to clearly distinguish between multiplicative and additive groups, both of which we are encountering. And if you look at this C to the power Z, then that is a group for which this mock prime factorization is valid. This C to the power Z will have a basis consisting of the output of the algorithm. And that is not just a basis in the sense of group theory, but just as before, it will be a basis as partially ordered sets as well. So in other words, if you look at the integers greater than one sitting in this group, and you look at those that are minimal under divisibility, so they are trying to be prime, then that is my co-prime basis, and that is a description of the co-prime basis that is independent of the algorithm. It is only in terms of the input. And something similar will be true for rings. The proof will be a little bit intricate, so if you want to construct such a proof, then it is recommended that you first prove that what I write down is actually valid, uh, and if it is not valid, you have to modify it, of course, and tell me about it, and then you simply transpose that proof to the situation of rings. Okay, so then it is now time to pass to the co-prime base algorithm for ideals. Any questions? Okay. So now we have the new co-prime base algorithm, and let me first write down what it is supposed to accomplish. So that is the co-prime base algorithm for ideals in orders in a number field. So the input uh, the input that is an order R. So that was lacking here. The order was implicit in just Z. And we are not given integers in there, but we are given fractional ideals and they should not only be fractional but they should also be integral so they are sitting inside R and if you remember the definition of a fractional well, R ideal, I should maybe say, then fractional R ideals were not allowed to be zero. So if I take fractional R ideals inside R, that is just completely the same as giving non-zero ideals of R in the traditional sense. And the output
Well, to begin with, it should be an order, an order. Capital A, containing R, and it will be sitting in the same field of fractions of R. And a finite set, which I call X, of invertible A-ideals. So that is going to be the analog of the X over here. And I should simply copy uh, what I want here. Oh, I see, yeah. So these X's, they are greater than one. So I want that these A-ideals are integral. They are sitting inside A but non-zero, but they should not be equal to A, because then they cannot pretend to be prime ideals. And it should be pairwise co-prime. Such that for each I, you can write the, A, the AI as a power product of X. So there are uh, NI, let's call them C. They are integers. So NIC, one for each C in X. So that is each NIC is a non-negative integer. And as before, and I want that AI is equal to the corresponding power product of the C's. And the intuition should here be exactly the same. These C's and X, they form a co-prime base for, oh, I forgot to put the capital I there, A there, because AI was only an R ideal, and I have to lift it up to capital A, and you see that whatever the merits of this identity will be, it certainly will imply that the AI become invertible over capital A, whereas in the beginning they may not have been invertible at all. Okay, so that is our purpose. And what I will do is give you a description of the algorithm that follows more or less, well, it actually follows it quite closely, what I have told you about the classical case, the traditional case, the big difference being that at each stage we are not just keeping track of ideals, but also of a ring. The ring is getting larger and larger during the course of the algorithm, although that will not happen 